Okay, so in this video, we will introduce the trace of a square matrix. The trace happens to be a function from square matrices to the real numbers. It actually is a very simple function, but it has some interesting properties that we can sometimes take advantage of. So the trace, T-R-A-C-E, is a function from all square matrices to the real numbers. So the trace takes a square matrix and outputs the real number. Let's define the trace and then look at some of its properties. We'll then denote the trace usually by simply lowercase t, lowercase r. tr for the trace of a matrix. So, if we let A be an arbitrary square matrix, so an element of R n by n, so A is a n by n square matrix, then we have the trace of A, so we write trace of A, The shorter form is simply TR with A equals, well, all it is is the sum, and this is how you will think of it numerically when you actually have an explicit matrix and you perform the calculation. The trace of A is just the sum of the diagonal entries of A. Well, that's it. That's the trace. You add the entries on the main diagonal of A. That's how you should think of the trace numerically, but to prove properties of the trace, you will need your basic properties of uh, summations. So, well, if you think of it, that's the entry in row 1, column 1, plus the entry in row 2, column 2, plus dot 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 up to the nth entry in the, on the main diagonal. So this is the entry in the nth row, nth column. We can write this much more concisely using our sigma notation. This is the sum of a, k, k, because to be on the main diagonal, the row index must equal the column index. k starts with 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and k ends with n. So k begins with 1, the first entry on the main diagonal, and as a is an n by n, there are n entries on the main diagonal. As always, we can write this slightly more compactly by dropping the lower and upper bound of summation, simply writing the sum of a k k over k. This always means summing over all possible values of k. Well, as we're looking for the entries of A on the main diagonal, we are simply saying add every entry of A that lies on the main diagonal. And that is how you will think of the trace of A when you want to prove its properties. Let's consider a very simple, two simple examples and then look at the properties of the trace. So what if A was a 2 by 2 matrix? 9, negative 4, 8, negative 2. Then the trace of A is the sum of the diagonal entries. So it is 9 plus negative 2, which is simply 7. That's it. What if A were, say, a 3 by 3 matrix? 11, 3, 0, 2, minus 4, 1, 5, 1, 6. Well, the trace of A again is the sum of the diagonal entries, so 11, negative 4, 6, so it is simply 11 plus negative 4 plus 6. Well, 11 minus 4 is 7, 
plus 6 is 13. And that is the trace of this matrix. So you see numerically the trace is very simple. Add the entries on the main diagonal and you have what's called the trace of A. Let's look at properties of the trace. Some are very simple, but there is one in particular that actually is very interesting. So here are the properties. I will assume that, of course, in each case that the addition and multiplication of matrices are all defined, so everything makes sense. The first one is the trace of A plus or minus B. So here the assumptions we can perform the addition are the subtraction of A and B, and so implicitly A and B have the same size. And the trace of A plus or minus B is simply the trace of A plus or minus, so if it is a plus, it is a plus, if it is a minus, it is a minus, the trace of B. First property, and I will leave the proof up to you as an exercise, this will actually be a very simple proof. Of course, when you prove properties of the trace, you always fall back on properties of sigma notation, of summations. Other properties the trace of k times a, where here k is a real number, you can simply move the real number outside of the trace. This happens to be k times the trace of a, and this is true for all, oops, for all real numbers k. So for any square matrix a, any real number k, the trace of ka equals k times the trace of a. This again, I will leave the proof to you as an exercise, and this should take you no more than just one line. Very simple property, very easy to prove. The same goes with this one. Here's now a more interesting property. Suppose that I give you two matrices A and B that are not necessarily square matrices, but where A times B is defined and B times A is defined, we know that in general AB is not equal to BA, and yet both matrices will have the same trace. So the trace of A times B will always equal, if both are defined, the trace of BA. And this property is actually very interesting. Not so trivial again, because AB and BA may be different, and actually also of different sizes, and yet if you add the diagonal entries of AB and of BA, you will always get the same number. Once again, I will leave the proof of this property as an exercise. Let's show or look at an example of this property to really appreciate why this is not so trivial. And this will bring us to the conclusion of our video. Suppose we take A to be a 2 by 3 matrix. Let's go with 2, 3 minus 1, 1, 8, 1. So A is a 2 by 3. Let's take B to be a 3 by 2. 2, 3, negative 3, 1, 1, negative 1. Let's compute AB and then BA. And look at their trace. See if at least the result holds for this example. Again, the proof of which I leave as an exercise to you. Let's compute AB. So 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 8, 1, times B, 2, 3, negative 3, 1, 1, negative 1. Well, let's see. A is a 2 by 3 matrix. B is a 3 by 2 matrix. Multiplication is defined, and the result would be a simple 2 by 2 square matrix. Well, let's construct the first row of our new matrix by fixing the first row of A and going through both columns of B. We will have 4 minus 9, negative 5 minus 1, negative 6, 
then 6 plus 3, 9 plus 1, 10 to construct the second row we fix the second row of A and go through every column of B 2 minus 24, negative 22 plus 1, negative 21 3 plus 8, 11 minus 1, 10 and so we can now look at the trace of A, B. The trace of A, B, the sum of the diagonal entries, negative 6 plus 10, is quite simply 4. So the trace of A, B is 4. Let us now compute B times A. Let's invert the order of our two matrices. So B, 2, 3, negative 3, 1, 1, negative 1, times the matrix A, 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 8, 1. Well, let's see. A, a B is a 3 by 2 matrix. A is a 2 by 3 matrix. Multiplication is defined. The result is a 3 by 3 matrix. So right away, there is a big difference. Where AB was a 2 by 2 matrix, BA is now a 3 by 3 matrix, still a square matrix, and so the trace still makes sense. Here, we'll save ourselves a bit of work. We don't really care so much as the matrix BA as the entries on its main diagonal, because we only care about the trace of BA. And this is a good exercise. We don't need to construct the entire matrix, just the entries, the three entries on the main diagonal. So if you think of it, this is entry 1, 1. And so we take the first row of B times the first column of A. So we'll have 2 times 2, 4, plus 3 times 1, 3, 4, plus 3 is 7. Check. To construct this entry, this is the entry 2, 2, and so we'd say 2, 2, therefore the second row of B, 2, times the second column of A. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus 8, negative 1. That's it. And finally, the third entry on the diagonal is entry 3, 3, 3, 3, so third row of B, times the third column of A negative 1, negative 1 is negative 2. And we can now simply add those up to find the trace of B8. It is 7 plus negative 1 plus negative 2. But all this is is 7 minus 3, which is again 4. And if you think about this, this is quite astonishing. Whereas AB is a 2 by 2 matrix, BA is a 3 by 3 matrix, the entries are very different, and yet, if you add the entries on the diagonal of both matrices, the answer is the same. And this is not an accident. The trace of AB, if AB and BA are defined, they both will be square matrices, and they will always have the same trace. Once again, that property I leave to you as an exercise. And this completes our discussion of the trace.